What would you say if I told you that you can lap faster and more consistently all while having fun with a car that drives more responsibly in Forza Motorsport just by making a few minor tuning adjustments? Well, that's exactly what we're doing today. I want to show you how to tune cars in Forza for better response and lap times using my beloved 911 GT3 as a test case. I'll be showing you the tuning adjustments I make while explaining the theory behind them, then directly comparing lap performance before and after. So you'll know exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it, followed by actually seeing it in action. Sound good? Okay, let's go. We're at Lime Rock, doing a reference lap with the 911's completely default tune. I want to explain how the car feels, and as a result, what we need to tune in order to improve it. We begin the lap on the straightaway, braking hard into the extended T1. You can tell by the tortured tyres that the car, by default, exhibits an extreme understeer tendency, as I'm having to push in with the wheel and scrub the front tyres. This is bad for both lap time and tyre life. Porsche 911 should have a natural oversteer tendency off throttle, which allows it to effortlessly carve up circuits like this. And currently, it just isn't behaving as I would expect. I'm driving the car in anger, trying to get as much natural rotation as possible and use as much of the track as possible in order to maximize the lap time, since we want a fair comparison. All in all, the car feels a little jittery and unresponsive, so we really want to make it compliant. We cross the line with a time of 50 seconds and 8 tenths. That's the reference we want to beat. Back at the setup menu, we have to remember that Forza Motorsport is a cutting edge simulator with 48 times more realism. So we have to make our adjustments carefully, just like we would in real life. To that end, we'll begin by going to the anti-roll bars and completely maxing both of them out. We then pull back the rear bar in order to reintroduce a little bit of stability on the rear end. The rule here is if you want more oversteer at low to mid speeds, increase the rear anti-roll bar. And if you want more understeer at low to mid speeds, decrease the rear anti-roll bar. In Forza, more anti-roll bar generally just means more grip. Now, in that same spirit, we'll go to the aero section and max out both the front and rear downforce. We then get some rotation back by lowering the rear downforce a little. While this will work great on tighter tracks like Lime Rock and Mid-Ohio, you will have far more luck lowering the downforce on tracks with long straights such as Le Mans. If in doubt, go high downforce. But if you're having trouble with lap times, reduce the front and rear aero until the lap times start to improve. Remember, high downforce means your car will take turns better but be slower on straights. Less downforce means higher speeds on straights but worse turning performance. More downforce on the front means more oversteer at high speeds, while more downforce on the rear means more stability and understeer at high speeds. Go to the differential section and max out the acceleration setting. This will allow maximum power delivery to our rear wheels, allowing us to break out the rear end on throttle, meaning that with tactful driving, we'll be able to keep the car in natural rotation and improve our lap times. This is especially crucial in a rear engine car like the Porsche because the chassis layout tends to create understeer on throttle. The differential is what allows the wheels on opposing sides to spin at different speeds. The more we increase the acceleration setting, the more power we can deliver, but the higher the chance of spinning the wheels. Conversely, the higher we have the deceleration setting, the more the car will understeer while coasting or braking, while the lower we have the deceleration, the more it will naturally rotate in these states. With a rear-wheel drive car in Forza, anywhere between 70% to 100% acceleration and less than 20% deceleration tends to be the play. For front-wheel drive, it's more extreme at 100% and 0% respectively. Let's take these setup adjustments to the track to see how they've affected our lap time and handling. You can immediately see more natural rotation by the fact that I'm keeping the wheel centered throughout much of the turn. This means that the car is now finally beginning to rotate itself and I can modulate my throttle and wheel inputs in order to keep it in that state for optimum lap times. Above all, the car handles way more like an actual GT car and is a lot more fun to drive. So even if this doesn't improve our lap time, it's still at the very least going to improve our fun. And if you're wondering how I'm getting these snappy nuanced inputs, you can find the exact sim gear I use linked in the description down below. We end up with a lap time of 50.5, which has already beaten our default tune by 3 tenths of a second. Now we adjust our tyre pressures. 
I find that having hot on track pressures of 2.2 to 2.3 bar is ideal for race tyres. You will have to check the car's telemetry while driving to ensure that you've placed them into that window. Next, we augment our car's grip and rotation even more by adjusting the alignment. Set the front and rear camber between negative 1 and negative 2 degrees. You always want more camber on the front wheels than the rears. This is a little unrealistic as in real life GT cars often run well in excess of 3 degrees of camber, but in Forza, less camber generally just means more grip. Notice that the Porsche has negative 0.2 degrees of front toe, which is kind of just insane and dials in a ton of understeer for no reason. You'll almost always find race cars running either neutral or positive front toe in real life while running negative rear toe to aid in stability. Lastly, we increase the caster angle to make our steering more snappy and responsive. In Forza, generally 6 to 7 degrees is good. This means more camber while turning and less camber on straights, improving performance all round. This should be massively transformative, so let's take it back onto the track. The car is now an absolute rotation machine, as you can see through the first corner complex. It's absolutely carving up the track. If you want to see how it can also carve up your opposition in multiplayer, check out this video here where I do a last to first run using this exact setup in top split. The tune is allowing me to do better lines throughout the track. Unfortunately, we get a slight Forza Curb collision bounce on this turn, but it doesn't tragically affect our lap. The last turn feels fantastic. As we cross the line for a stunning 50.3, a half second lap time improvement from the default tune over a lap that's only 50 seconds long. On larger tracks, you can see how tuning can literally save you seconds. The last major change left for us to do is tweak the gear ratios. Often, these will be the magic elements that will make a tune come together. However, in this race, no matter how much I tweaked, I simply couldn't get an improvement on the 50.3 lap time, which just goes to show how contextual that change is. Gear ratio should always be tweaked to suit the track. Tracks like Le Mans will need longer gear ratios with higher top speeds, while smaller tracks like Lime Rock will generally need shorter ratios so you can run through the gears and stay in the torque band. Our last major changes are the suspension and dampers, which on the 911 on this track I found to have little appreciable benefit, so I'll simply give you the theory. Softer suspension means the car absorbs bumps better, but is less stable at speed. Harder suspension means more stability, but a more nervous car over rough terrain. Often, it's a personal preference combined with track specificity. Over on the dampers, try to memorize this. If you want the car to oversteer more under power, increase the rear bump and the front rebound. If you want the car to be more stable under power, decrease the rear bump and front rebound. If you want the car to turn more under braking, decrease the front bump and rear rebound. If you want the car to be more stable under braking, increase the front bump and rear rebound. I hear that in Forza you generally want the rebound to be around one third higher than the bump and in many cases the default tunes are a fairly good ratio to begin with so you can simply move them together as I described above. The suspension geometry settings are advanced settings introduced in Forza Motorsport 8 which we won't go into in this video since we've already gone over a lot and they'll simply overcomplicate everything. Between the options we've covered, you've got more than enough to get each car handling exactly how you want it. Let me know how this tuning guide treats you, what else you want to know, and of course, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future racing tips. I'll see you next time.